so you, you get the heat and the spice of that chili. And then you take a bite of that cinnamon roll. You could see that frosting is starting to melt. Come on. And now, from a distance, it's Michael Berger. <laughs> Why am I applauding? There's nobody here. I'm by myself. Hey, nice to be with you. I am Michael Berger from a distance, and this is episode number two. And if you caught my first episode I posted on Facebook, then you know things are different. I got an announcer now. That's Paul Bolin. Music, Richard Allen. Of course, they're not here. They're in their own homes. They're uh, sheltered in place. They're quarantined. They're by themselves. They're in a, I don't know. What, what do you call it uh, when you're all by yourself alone in your house? Uh, divorced. Anyway, it's just going to be us today. And first of all, thank you for all the kind words you put on my Facebook page there and on YouTube for that first video. It means a lot. I miss you too. And um, I, I've taken your suggestions to heart. In fact, a lot of you said, hey, why don't you do more of these videos? And I thought, well, you, you must be bored. And you're done watching Tiger King on Netflix, as am I. So I am going to take your suggestion. In fact, in that first video, I made this little rant about cleaning my kitchen and I took you into my pantry and I found something I thought I'd lost. And it was this, this big recipe book. And it's a, it's a remarkable book in that you got 320 recipes. Every single recipe we made on a little show I hosted with Maddie Monfort called Mike and Maddie. It's uh, collated and categorized uh, fish, chicken, pork, desserts, appetizers, everything you could possibly imagine. And on the last day, we were walking out to our car with our little cardboard box, and somebody said, oh, here's your parting gift. And it's every recipe from the show, uh, everything. Chicken Diane, which, by the way, was great. And that was her name, too, Little Chicken Diane. Anyway, you said to me, hey, why don't you make those recipes? And I thought, why don't you mind your own business? I got things to do. And I realized I got nothing to do. So I'm going to do that today, tonight. I'm going to make us chili. And not just any chili. Of the 300 recipes in the book, the only one that meant anything to me was my dad's homemade recipe for chili. So we are going to do that. I think it's delicious. It's uh, inexpensive. It'll feed you a family of 10. So uh, the challenge with family recipes is, in my dad's case, he didn't write anything down. And I'm trying to remember what happened. I just I remember sitting in the kitchen on the bar stool looking over at him at the stove and he was making it in one of those big blue those speckled pots that Granny used on Beverly Hillbillies, he used that, but I never saw him measure anything. There was no measuring cup. There was no teaspoon. He did this. He did that. He, he did that. If you knew my dad, God love me, like to take a little taste. So I'm going to do my best to recreate this recipe, and uh, who knows? I mean, I've added a few, few things over the years, but I don't know if it's any better or worse. My dad's not around to ask him anymore. I lost my dad back in 1982. Um, I didn't lose him. I know exactly where he is. Taking a little dirt nap. And if you knew my dad, you'd know he'd say something like, that's pretty funny, son. What else you got? My dad was a very funny man. My mom had a great sense of humor. The two of them have passed. But their legacy was to leave me with this notion that, hey, try to be happy, regardless of your situation in life. Sometimes it takes an effort, but sometimes we need to make an attempt to be happy. And I think that honors them best. So hopefully I'll make them smile, you smile. And at the very least, I'll make us some chili. Uh, I've got a little lay in the land before we get cooking. I'm in my house, my kitchen. I'm upstairs, actually. This house is flipped. So everything upstairs, you got your kitchen and uh, living room, dining room. I got an office, uh, got a guest bedroom. Come on by. No, don't do that. Um, so in this kitchen, because it's flipped, you, you're kind of up in the trees here, if you can get a look. I, um, I think it's great. If you're dyslexic, it's even better. How many here are dyslexic? Lower your hands. Ah, uh, here's your first joke. So I've cleaned the kitchen, as you might expect. It's been sanitized. I've, I've done the whole thing. Of course, the pots, the pans, the towels, uh, the cutting board. I don't know. I even ran out of juice. I had to make my own cleaning solution. This is Clorox and vodka. So I'm either going to kill that virus or get it drunk. Uh, that Sanjay Gupta is the guy that's got me scared. Every time I turn on CNN, he's got something else for me to do. By the way, that's an unfortunate name, isn't it? Sanjay Gupta? That sounds like something you get just after the virus. How are you feeling? Oh, a little better, but I think I still got a little Sanjay Gupta. <laughs> yeah, that was Bob Hope. Yeah, for those 50 and older. Hey, how about that Sanjay Gupta? Any marvelous? Yeah, he's clean. Uh, all right. Hey, apropos of nothing, how about we start with this cutting board? You got to have a clean surface and uh, a stable cutting board to work on. Um, I cleaned this one today for you. 
I took it out in the garage, a little sandpaper. I actually used a belt sander and kind of got away from me. This thing used to be about eight inches thick. But you can clean them that way. I, um, oh, this, by the way, this is an old Martha Stewart board. Isn't that funny? Probably made that in shop class, prison. Anyway, oh, you know, I put these on here. This is a good idea to keep your board from moving. These little feet, you find them at a hardware store like you see on the bottom of a bar stool. You can screw those in. I used stainless steel screws so they don't rust and uh, the right length so they don't pop through. And now you get a nice stable workstation since we're going to be cutting and onions and veggies and such. So you want a nice surface there. And speaking of cutting and knives, let's talk, let's talk knife skills for a moment. Um, First, I don't have any. Uh, let me define what I do as a chef here. I, I don't know what I'm doing, is it, it, the truth. But I have spent enough time with great chefs. Um, that's a little scary. Let me put that down. I hosted 535 episodes of Mike and Maddie, and we had chefs on every day. I did 1,000 hours with Christina Ferrari at a show called Home and Family. She was a master chef. Christina Ferrari, Jamie Gwen was another one. Uh, I did a show called Iron Chef USA. So I worked with Todd English and um, Roy Yamaguchi. And they didn't make me a better chef, but they, they showed me some great tips that I'd like to pass on to you as we go through this afternoon. Uh, get your knives sharpened. A, a sharp knife is a safe knife. And then once it's sharpened, they told me this is the, the easiest way to keep it sharp. Get yourself this little honing tool, which you probably have on your block right now. Set it in place, take your knife, and then go right up against it. And then turn it about 20 degrees. It's going to feel warmer. And then just draw it back five, six times, eight times, and that'll put a beautiful hone on your knife. And it'll keep it sharp, keep it safe. I can't do that fancy, I don't know, the, the Gordon Ramsay's great at it. Uh, they're all, all these chefs are great. The, the, uh, who's the guy that has the cooking show? Um, of, of, uh, Bobby Flay, yeah. I almost said Favor Flay. I don't think he's got a clock. He hasn't been to work. He doesn't need to know what time it is. Anyway, those are your, your knife skills. And I don't know if you need to do this. I do it. I um, I just rinse it. Probably don't have to. I just don't want any metal shavings in my colon, which, by the way, was a big, big hit for uh, Conway Twitty. What else we got? How about the stove? This is a gas stove, which is appropriate since we're making chili. And these pots and pans, you don't need all of them. You know, with chili, you can just dump it all in one pot. But I do like to brown my meat in this cast iron skillet, which I love. This skillet I got uh, two years ago uh, as a birthday gift. It was my 40th birthday. <laughs> it's not even close. Uh, this I love, my big pot. I call the 420. If you're having a gummy bear, that made, made you laugh. Uh, tall sides, firm bottom, dumping everything in there. And then you got your uh, little Teflon pan, which we actually don't need to cook in. But I brought these out because one of the questions that came up a lot in these cooking shows is, when do you put the oil in the pan? Well, here's what the experts told me. In a cast iron and a stainless steel, heat the pan first. Don't put any oil in. And then once it's hot, you dump the oil in. Because apparently that opens up the pores of the pan. And then when that oil hits it, it creates a nice uh, slick surface. On a Teflon pan, they say never heat a pan empty that's got a coating on it. So then put your, uh, put your butter and your oil in there cold and then heat it up. Shall we talk ingredients? All right, chili. Uh, I like my bush beans here. Um, the baked beans, especially. Uh, the other brands work for the other type of bean, but for me, the bacon and the brown sugar uh, makes it. So four cans of that. Oh, by the way, if I go too quickly and you're not uh, catching the ingredients or how-tos, I'm going to put a link. Everything that I'm going to do is going to be in that link below. So you're going to get the quantities and how to do it. So don't feel like you're going to get left behind. I, I'm thrilled if you're playing along and cooking with me, but by the time you see this, you'll be able to stop and start anyway. So don't feel that you're, uh, you're getting left behind. And, and again, I don't know what I'm doing, so there's that. Seriously, I can't. I have little notes here. My brain's the size of a small bar of Neutrogena after a hot shower. Just know that. So four cans of beans. We got uh, a can of pinto beans, and we got a can of kidney beans. We're going to put some tomatoes in there, a little tomato sauce. A little barbecue sauce, uh, barbecue sauce, believe it or not. This is a great spice called Santa Maria. I put this on almost everything. There's not much you can sprinkle this on that doesn't get better. Except your agent. Spice pack. This is a McCormick. You can use Lowry's. You can use Schilling. It doesn't matter because I add quite a few spices on top of this. But this gives you a good base coat. Of course, we're going to put some onions in there, a red onion. And uh, this is a brown, uh, not a brown, it's a sweet onion. Big jumbo sweet onion. 
I'm gonna put a shallot in there. I'm gonna put some beer in there. Oh, spices, let's talk spices for a moment. Big difference between chili powder and cayenne pepper. I've made the mistake more than once, and it's not pleasant. Chili powder is not as hot as cayenne. Uh, chili powder on a scale, on the Scoville scale, is 500 to 1,000 units, nothing. Cayenne pepper starts at 30,000 units, big difference. Uh, I like my chili with a little kick to it, but my gosh, you gotta be careful when you add these. Uh, I learned a lesson years ago when I was cooking on Mike and Maddie. We're doing this segment live on the air. And Maddie said, hey, do you, uh, you wanna try this habanero? Pepper. Now, Maddie was born in Cuba, raised in Miami. She's, she's good with spices. And I didn't know a habanero from uh, Bob De Niro. So she, I said, sure, you know, live on the air. And I take a bite. A habanero pepper is, is about 250,000 units of heat. I took a bite. And I don't know, maybe because I'm on the air. I, don't, I didn't feel like spitting it out. But it was a huge mistake. And not only did I take a bite, instead of spitting it out, because I guess that was impolite on the air, I swallowed it. And that hurt twice. So be very careful of these peppers. Um, my mouth is still hot. This is 20 years later. You put a graham cracker in there and some uh, uh, chocolate and uh, marshmallow and I'll blow out a s'more. Uh, we got salt, pepper, of course. Oh, here's something that uh, I use in my chili. I use a little white sugar and a little brown sugar. And of course, different cheeses along the way. That said, oh, by the way, uh, we'll put celery into something new and um, I think we can get cooking. Let's talk proteins for a moment. What kind of chili do you like? By the way, the uh, refrigerator light is out. Uh, it's not out, it's out because I turned off the refrigerator because it was humming and you could hear that on the camera. So there's a, if you got a, what is this, a Viking, uh, the kill switch is up here. It's not inside, I had a call. And they go, it's up there, it's okay. Uh, but things are still cold, don't worry about food safety. Here we go, because I just turned it off 20 minutes ago. I got, uh, beef and I got turkey. Now, the reason I got both is that I'm actually making two pots of chili. I'm gonna do one for the family and then I'm gonna make another pot for uh, some neighbors. If you're gonna do turkey, uh, you're gonna use a pound and uh, some fun facts with turkey. We got nothing else to do, so let me, maybe the kids are around. Here's some fun facts with turkey. Uh, the tom turkey, of course, is the male. The female is the hen. The tom turkey is the only one that uh, gobbles. <laughs> That's just the guy. Uh, the female doesn't, you know, maybe she's tired or it was squawking, but the, the female turkey doesn't make any noise. The average turkey has 3,500 feathers. And believe it or not, a, a wild turkey can fly up to uh, 55 miles an hour, which sounds like a lot until you realize that um, that wild turkey will get you off the ground in about 10 minutes. But we're not here to talk altitude. There's your turkey, and of course, this is beef. I had this beef ground this morning. Go to your butcher and ask for a chili grind. That chili grind is thicker, and it doesn't get mushy when you cook it. So let's do the beef now. I bet most of you want the beef. The turkey is a, a healthy alternative. I'll do that for the next pot. Before I put this meat in the pan, I'm gonna do what I told you to do. I'm gonna heat this up. Get this hot first, then we add the oil. I'm gonna put canola in and not uh, virgin, extra virgin, because the canola has a higher smoke point. Again, a little overkill. You could just dump it in the pot and tell me to go home, but uh, we're gonna go through the process here just in case you wanna know. And while this heats, let's, let's uh, cut up an onion. I'm always impressed with these chefs that cut an onion so beautifully and elegantly and perfect. Take a little paring knife like this and you don't stab it, but you wanna get the skin off and the trick, they say, is to go way at the top and you wanna take the tip and the root out. So you dig in and you turn the onion, not the knife, and you take that top off. Same thing on the bottom. Dig it in, turn the onion, don't turn the knife. Now, you wanna cut that onion with the grain. See these little lines that come up and down here? Cut with the grain. And now, we're gonna take the skin off that. You can take it with a knife, sometimes you get lucky and just find a good starting point, and it comes off. Look how easy that is. Same thing on the other one. Take this skin. Now, if you're gonna just do onion rings or big pieces, you don't have to go to the most trouble, but this is how you do it if you want to slice. Now, you wanna protect the root, 
And the chefs say, don't cut into the root, just make cuts with the root, with the lines like that, but not at the very top. They say you don't need to do that side cut. All you got to do then is you start here and you will wind up with some nicely cut onion pieces. However, I found an easier way and this is what I do. <laughs> Little shortcut. This one's called uh, a Mueller. Might be a Mueller. We don't know. We're not going to ask any more questions. Got this on Amazon. And what you do is you take your onion in a, a reasonable piece here and you set it in. Done. And you're going to be surprised at how even these things are. Be very careful because those knives are sharp. And you don't, you don't have to be great at this. Just get it close. And I'm telling you, this thing, that's, I don't know if that piece is too big. Let's see what happens. Done. <laughs> and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something. Watch. Look at this. Those are beautifully chopped. Better than I can do it. And we'll do that shallot as well. By the way, that is perfect. Let me get this uh, oil in now. Again, this is canola oil. And I had this pan, like I said, a couple years now, so it's seasoned. The nice thing about heating your pan first is when you, when you put that oil in, it dissipates so quickly because it's so hot. And you don't risk burning that oil. Sometimes that can get away from you if you put the oil in the pan and then walk away. But now since the oil is prime, we're going to put our meat in. And I'm, I'm going to cut that shallot up as well. But first, let's do this meat. Let me... Happy birthday to... You get the idea. By the way, a little shortcut because I've actually put some bleach in that. So I think I can cut my time down like that. It's my skins. I'm down to the phalanges. I got nothing left here washing my hands so many times. All right, let's take a look at this beef. Again, this morning, cut it. This is not cheap. This is seven bucks a pound. That's, that's a little high. It's an 80-20 Gelson's. What are you going to do? No line. 80-20, um, so you want a little more fat in that. But regardless of where you buy your beef, ask the butcher to do a chili grind, and you'll see what it looks like. That way, it's not a, like a hamburger patty. And what you can do, see the lines in there? Isn't that great? It breaks up much easier. And by the way, I'm not going to put any uh, seasoning on this until I've got this whole thing brown. In fact, I like to add my seasoning when we're in the big pot there. All right, that is going to brown. We're going to chop that shallot, but I'm also going to start the big pot here. In this pot, I'm going to put the extra virgin olive oil and a little bit of butter. Again, I'm going to bring this one up to heat. Uh, let's do the shallot. Again, with the shallot, and since we're going to use the little mueller, you don't have to do much here. Just cut the ends off, just like that. Take the little sweater off. You don't want to cut too. You don't want to take too much of that off either, do you? There you go. And then we're going to put this in the magic chopper. Now this is a. This is a perfect size. It's nice. Had a little piece of onion in there. That looks good on your sweater. This whole thing will go. Ready? <laughs> Why is that fun? Why? Well, you know what? I'm starting to get the. Uh, that's a pretty strong onion. My eyes are starting to tear up. Maybe it's just that I miss you. They really are. Okay. Not yet. Brown this meat. By the way, I cook this meat all the way through. I don't let it cook in the pot. I like to have it all brown before I get in there. And you're going to wind up with a little bit of fat in this. There's a little moisture in that meat, obviously. Uh, but you're going to have some fat because it's a 80-20. You know, the thing about chili is that there's no right or wrong way to make it. And there are so many things you can add to it. It's really improv food. I don't think I've made the exact same recipe twice in the number of years I've done this. So don't worry about getting things exact. And I can't stress this enough. The chefs told me that when you're cooking, you got to taste and taste constantly. 
So when we go through the spices here, I'm going to put some in, but I, I'm going to start with a smaller amount and then taste and then add and then add, because certainly my taste can be different than your taste, and who knows if you're going to like this or not, but I want you to build this uh, your own. I just want to give you the, the blueprint here, and then we'll start going. All right, let's put the olive oil in there, and we'll put some butter as well. I got to... Here's the, where's the butter? I want you to see that that butter was the only thing left. Here it is. Have you ever heard of this brand? It's called Vital Farms, right? This was one of the, you know, a couple days ago when shopping was still, it's still tight, but the store didn't have any of the challenge butter that I normally buy. So Vital Farms, I said, oh, I'll take a chance. And it's got a cute little story. There's a little... Story on the front here, Vital Farms, raised with respect, fresh air, sunshine, freedom to graze. I assume they're talking about the cow, not me. Uh, this I found interesting. I'm not making this up. See what this says? Girls on grass. I don't know what that means. I mean, I know what it means, and it had nothing to do with butter, but I don't know why it's on their thing. But this is the story. This is the reason I saved it. There's a poem in there from the cow, apparently. I won't read the whole thing, but here we go. Look at this. This creamery butter, a gift so sweet from friendly cows, the grass they eat. Across the plains, the world our home, through the years, with them we've roamed. It goes on and on. This nice note from the cow, which is, you know, nice until, you know, somebody yells steak. This cow doesn't know I've got Cousin Bruce in that pan either, so keep it our secret. Again, I wouldn't put this in yet. Still not done. Oh, the butter. Let's put a, again, how much? You know, you, you guys cook, you know what the idea is. Put, uh, put what you want in there. You just want to get a combination of butter and olive oil. How about that? How about a half a tablespoon? And see, when it's already warm, you're not going to burn that butter because you're right on top of it now. You've, you've been watching it cook. And we're going to add our shallots and our onion you want this shallot and onion to, they say get translucent, clear. Oh boy, come on now. It smells good. I wish, you know, see if you were here, then you'd smell this and it'd be nice. That's the one thing I, I well, there's a lot of things I miss. An audience is, is one of them for sure. So maybe next time I do this, if there is a next time, I'll do this live. So you can say, hey, <laughs> you idiot. That's not a spatula. Because I don't mind being mocked by people I like. All right. Brown this on medium. Get this clear. Brown this. I mean, uh, saute it. Saute. Fancy, right? Oh, man. That smells good. So when this meat is finished cooking, then I, then I add it then to the onions and the uh, shallot. I guess we have a minute to chat while this goes to work. You know, on a lighter note, I mean, I, I do try to find the funny. I thought it was humorous, since I live close to L.A. and I see this article where people are not, they're not able to go to the uh, barbershop, the, the beauty shop, uh, hospitals are doing much more important things, so they're not getting their procedures done, so no plastic surgery and, you know, no facelifts and no tummy tucks and, you know, the hair is doing what the hair does and we're soon going to see people's true colors, aren't we, after that, which is... Uh, a great, it was an old Ronald Reagan joke he made on himself, you know, because Reagan was certainly up there in age, and his hair was uh, always a conversation piece because it was jet black, and then it was another color, and there was a combination color. Somebody at a press conference said, uh, President Reagan, uh, do you dye your hair? And without missing a beat, he goes, well, no, that just happens to be the next color after gray. <laughs> Ronnie. All right, so that is coming up nicely. By the way, if I stop down at any point, it's a good idea to wear long sleeves, isn't it, cooking? I don't know what I'm thinking. A big onion hanging there off to my pectoral. Is that where your pectoral is? I don't know. Um, if I stop down at all, or if you see a cut, it's because I got, I got a couple of cameras running here, and I'm, I'm by myself, folks. And so I may have to do something, or a light goes out. And, of course, since this is not happening live, I can stop down and fix whatever I need to stick. So... If, uh, if I come back up and things have changed slightly, it's because uh, I had to stop. It's just me because, like the rest of you, I'm quarantined. All right, we're getting close here. 
I don't know what you do if you drain the meat. That's a little, see that? A little piece of hamburger meat broke away from the mothership and is now running free on the floor. But it's okay, because I steam cleaned my floor. If you saw the first video, I, I told you I hit it with a McCulloch, and a lot of things came up. Seriously. Um, watch that first video. I think there's a very funny line in there uh, on Facebook about me steam cleaning my floor. Don't know how many of these I'll do. Have you noticed that everybody is doing these videos now from their house? That It's actually kind of neat. You're getting these free concerts, and you're getting tours of museums, which is terrific. I mean, there is a, there is a, there's an upside to a little bit of this, right? We are talking to our families more, spending time with our, our kids and friends, and um, again, this this too shall pass, and we will be good as normal. That um, that's about right. They're on, man, on the onion. So I'm going to pop this in in a minute. While that cooks, let me uh, let me clean a little bit. Do you like to clean as you uh, cook? I uh, I kind of do. Even if you weren't watching, I kind of like a a clean kitchen. Um, we've got hold on, got some onions left over. We don't want to waste any onions. There you go. All right. Cheers. Might as well. It's right here. Happy birthday. That's enough. Okay, we're looking good. You know what I will do? Yeah, you see all the rendering in there? I think what I'll do is I will scoop that meat out rather than drain it. You can put it like in a, obviously in a, in a drainer. Just don't, don't put that grease down the, the sink. Um, don't put anything. The disposal is, it's a misnomer. Those things really shouldn't, they shouldn't, uh, grind up anything. I I, uh, I lived in a condo once, and my neighbor upstairs uh, said, "Is it okay to put celery uh, down a disposal?" And I said, "You should move now because you're not safe for anybody." All right, there we go. I think that's enough. So let's transfer this. Let's transfer this beef. See, that's cooked through. Again, I'm not putting the spice on this yet. I'm going to put it. The seasoning. I'm going to put it in here. Certainly don't need it on anymore. For those of you that have a cast iron skillet, you do realize how great that seasoning gets on that pan, right? And how after a number of years, it's like a Teflon pan. And there are many ways to clean a cast iron skillet. The trick I was told is get a, um, get a ball of foil and some salt. Put salt in that pan, cast iron, and then get a ball of foil and rub it, and that'll, that'll clean your cast iron pan. And it's okay to get a cast iron pan wet. You can wash it in the sink. Don't put it in the dishwasher, but you can rinse it off. Just make sure you dry it, and then put a quart, not a quart, put a, a little bit of oil <laughs> on it afterwards. Keep it moist. Don't put a quart of oil in your pan. That would be wrong. It's not a car. All right, look at that. Oh boy, that smells good. Now I'm gonna start adding some spices. Art Carney, remember that? All right, so here's the chili pack. Again, use any, that was just plain gas coming out of there. Good night. This is just the chili pack, which uh, again, you can use any one you want, but I'm gonna add a lot of different flavors to that. But obviously you wanna mix this up and get that coated. All around. You know, I've never, I've never cooked on TV for you. I mean, first of all, this is not TV. There's six of you watching. But I've not done this, you know, on demand. I've, I've cooked for family and friends and loved ones. But this is unique. And this is harder than it appears because it's, uh, you wouldn't believe the mess down here by my feet. All right, that's mixed pretty well, don't you think? All right, let's start opening some beans. I, uh, as I said, like the bush beans. I do have an electric can opener, but come on. 
Let's go. We can do this, can't we? That's good. Uh, what is that? Carpal tunnel? What I do on this uh, bush bean can is I, I put it all in there. See that little bacon and fat on top? That's good for you. Again, I'm not a doctor. I, uh, I'm going to put my... By the way, do you get these... Uh, these smell good. The uh, trash bags with the scent. This, I'm considering using this as deodorant. I'm going to slip this under my shirt at some point if I ever run out because that one smells good. All right. All right, so four cans. You're, you're probably saying, my gosh, that's a... Uh, look at the beans. A lot of beans. I know. But what? We're quarantined. Crack a window. You'll be all right. On the baked beans, I use them all. On the other beans, I drain them because I don't want the chili too runny. I like a thick chili. Oh, man. That fat is floating at the top. One more. Other pan is off. This is on real low, so thank you for wondering. Is the stove too hot? No, it's not. Oh, that was a good one. See, the lid came off. Never, that's not, this is not good fiber. Don't ever put that in your... I'm going to switch over to something later. Mm -hmm. Girls on grass. What else we got? Uh, okay, how about uh, Pinto? I don't know why my dad had... Easy. I don't... Come here. Stay. I don't know why my dad had three different kinds of beans in there. I never asked him. I... I didn't cook as a kid. You know, when I first moved out, I like to drain this, these beans. When I first moved out of the house, it was, it was soon after I realized, oh, food goes bad, right? Where, you know, growing up, I raised, I was one of four, and mom and dad, kind of a traditional family, and uh, Food was always there and plentiful and, and fresh, you know. There was no mold on the bread. Well, you move out, right, first couple of weeks by yourself, and all of a sudden, you're going, boy, what's growing in the fridge? Again, I drain this, the kidneys. I like the kidneys. Look at the color of those kidneys. Nice uh, palette, right? That's not messy, right? Diced tomatoes. Hey, you want to go to the trouble of chopping your own tomatoes? Do that. That's really slippery now, because I've got pinto residue on my fingers, which is another song. Not as successful. Pinto residue. Drain. Uh, don't drain. Put them all in. Easy. That was not a good cut, was it? Easy. I know. I know. Doesn't that make you cringe? You watch people that, uh, ooh, don't hurt yourself. All right. There it is. Let me at least rinse. Happy birthday. Knock it off. There we go. Uh, oh, you know what? It's time I put a little spice in there. I'm starting to build up a little bean colony here. Let me get some of that meat present. They say when you spice your foods, you spice them along the way. You don't want to add all your spices because you can burn them, and then you can uh, certainly um, lose track of how much you put in. With a seasoning like this, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Put an amount down. You just... I. As a rule, if I got a pan, I, I do just do the circumference of that. See that? And of course, now it's just on the top. You mix it up. That spice, obviously, is a mixture of a lot of things, but I would do that. Again, I do love my cracked pepper. And I like it thick. Go to our restaurant, I always turn that thing at the bottom so I got some big chunks in there. Hopefully chip a tooth. What else we got? Brown sugar. This is, this is two tablespoons of brown sugar. Again, very personal. I like a sweet chili. This is a quarter cup of white sugar. Now, here's the thing. If you don't like it that sweet, don't add the sugar. What's wrong with you people? Now that's a pretty thick chili, right? You'll notice if you put the lid on as it uh, cooks, it'll, it'll put more moisture in there. I leave the lid off for quite a while, and again, I'm still kind of working this magic sauce. I do like to put 
I do like to put a beer in there. You don't have to use alcohol, folks. You can put, first of all, you don't need to put anything in there. I've done it that way. You don't, uh, you can put some stock in there. I do the beer for the flavor. And you don't have to use all of it. I keep this riding shotgun here so I can adjust how thick I want my chili. You want my favorite beer joke? Um, I can tell this because I've got Irish in my family. Uh, Mrs. O'Leary gets a knock at the door. Oh, Mrs. O'Leary, we have some bad news. Your husband down at the Guinness plant. Well, he fell into a vat of beer and he drowned. She goes, oh dear, was it a slow death? And the cop said, oh, I should say so. He got out three times to pee. You know what? A priest told me that. True story. Here's my other, here's my other favorite bar joke. A guy goes into a, a bar and says, hey, give me uh, five shots of Jack Daniels, but put them in separate little shot glasses. Five separate. Pours out five. Guy takes each shot, knocks them back one after another. Bartender says, wow. It's been a while since I've seen someone do that. Guy goes, well, you'd do it too if you got what I got. Bartender says, what's that? Guy goes, a dollar. Now, maybe at this point, it's worth tasting what we got here. <laughs> it's pretty good. I haven't put anything in yet, really, to kick it up. Tomato paste. I like a little tomato paste in mine. Obviously, you're gonna, you get too much of that tomato-y flavor, then you're closing in on spaghetti, so be careful what you're putting in there. This, again, I remember these tiny little cans that my dad would pop in there. I think, in fact, it was a contadina. There you go. You definitely want to stir that up. That looks like a, remember a sand tiki? Did you ever make sand tikis as kids in the sandbox? Yeah. Remember marbles? <laughs> How old are you, Michael? We had marbles as kids. All right, this is gonna get. We had, uh, what did we have? Oh my gosh, it's so different. How do kids even survive now at school? I had a uh, swing set that had no stopper on it. It would go and kids would fly off. We thought that was fun. Had a slip and slide, not a slip, remember slip and slide? That, I don't know why, I just, I, we had, I had, was gonna talk swings, but slip and slide, if you're too young to know this, slip and slide was made by Whammo. And it was this 50, did I just, I almost made a hat in a ship. I had a, it was a 50 foot piece of uh, polypropylene, this plastic yellow, and you hooked it up to your garden hose. It was called slip and slide by Whammo. And they had to stop making them because someone sued Whammo because people were, get this, they were slipping and sliding. Of course they were. But anyway, you would, <laughs> it said, you hook it up to your garden hose and then you put it on your lawn and it's hours of fun. Well, we didn't do that. We put that on the concrete driveway because you, man, into the garage door, we had fun. With it. Hey, hey, how about garage door? You got me going here, folks. When I was growing up, we didn't have a garage door opener. I was the opener. Dad would say, get the door, right? You go out, those big, remember those big, uh, wooden doors and it, it had four springs, right? And you'd pull it and there was a point where depending on the fulcrum, you'd, you'd either get it to hook or it would drop faster than Charlie Sheen's pants at a Hooters. That's, wow. I don't even know where that came from. Um, how about a slide? Remember the slides in elementary school? They're dangerous. You can't have that. We were, uh, we'd, we'd have the slide and it, it would be so hot sometimes out here in California. It, it wouldn't, you get on the top and somebody had to push you because it was, I'd come out there and spray it with some Pam, you know, to get some pace. Helicopter going by. Hmm. All right, that's mixed pretty well. How about a little cinnamon? All right, how much cinnamon? Yeah, good question. I would say a teaspoon. I've done this enough to, to let you know that I think I got a camera on the top of this. A teaspoon is about the amount that covers the circumference of that pot. Again, I'm going to probably add more, but I want to start it this way. I do want you to try a little cayenne pepper. I don't want you to be afraid of it. Chili powder, same thing. Let's go teaspoon. Same thing. You, you go about the distance across of that circle. Pi times radius, what, a radius times something squared. What's the radius of a circle? Pi, it's all coming back. You got me thinking about school. Oh, cayenne, let's do a little cayenne. Maybe, maybe to start, you'd do a little, uh, maybe quarter teaspoon, but 
it's always easier to add it. It's a little tough to get that heat out. Oh, now you see that barbecue sauce sitting there, right? I like a little barbecue sauce. I like KC Masterpiece. I like Sweet Baby Ray's. How much? You know what? Here's a little tip. That's how I start. Just put your initial in there. I'm going to go, there's M, B. Good thing it wasn't a longer name. It'd be too much. And that'll give you a little bit of flavor. Do I want to add a little more beer to this? Not yet. I want to check it. Oh, I would do a little salt. I don't know. Watch your diet. Low, low sodium stuff. I like a little thicker salt, a little coarse salt. I love when chefs do that. And my mom used to do that. Hit me in the eye once. Burned my retina with some rock salt. Uh, that's good. You know, for cheese, at the end, smoked Gouda. That is a, that is a, a good tip there. That'll uh, add another little layer of flavor. I'm going to have to break away here in a second and let this stuff simmer. Let's see if I need to add anything while we're here. You know, you're going to want to put this celery in closer to the end because you like the crunch on it. And I cut these pretty thin, but the celery will... Celery. 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 There's no celery. No one's working. The celery will add a nice crunch to it. By the way, did you know celery is a negative calorie food? That's right. Eat enough, you'll go hungry. Makes no sense. So how about, I got everything in there. How about we take a quick break? I mean, I'll be right back, you know, through technology, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put the lid on this. I'm going to let this simmer down. <laughs> Remember that? You just simmer down. Okay, Dad. I'm going to let this simmer. I'm going to clean the kitchen up a little bit, and then we'll, uh, we'll head to the home stretch. I'll be right back. Make sure this one's still fresh. Okay, welcome back. Let's see what we got going here. It's been about 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to add, this is a cup of celery. In reality, you could add that celery earlier. In fact, with everything I made today, you could... You could dump everything at once, you could get it hot, brown that meat, and then knock yourself out. If you got the time, um, and for me it's kind of fun, I usually cook on a Sunday night and make a big meal, make an event out of it, cook for some people that are hungry. The celery actually will maturate, the flavors will come together. I think this chili is better a day or two after. I wouldn't leave it, you know, in the sun with crickets, but... Uh, the longer this thing gets together with all the other flavors, I think the better it tastes. So, a few more minutes on that. I'm going to add something to this chili that I guarantee you will change the way you make chili um, or what you serve it with. Um, we're moments away. Here's the uh, punchline to this special little ingredient. It's in the microwave. I'm going to put 20 seconds on it. I'm going to plate this now, as they say. That's, what, that's the fancy word, plate, right? I got a little bottle of wine ready to go. By the way, speaking of wine, let me show you this. I worked on a show called Hot in Cleveland. And on, uh, be right there. One of the uh, season endings there, they gave everybody a bottle of wine. And it's this beautiful bottle of red wine engraved. And the inscription is what makes this thing priceless. It's from Elka, who was the character, uh, Betty White. And it says here, when you laugh, you're really alive and you forget about everything else. Maybe that's uh, good advice to get uh, us wrapped up here with. I'm not going to open this bottle. I've got one working. I've got uh, that opened. You know, they say wine should breathe a little bit. It's doing that. Now, here's the, um, here's the thing I bet you've never thought of to serve with your chili. That's a homemade cinnamon roll. I want you to consider a chili that's got a little heat in it, depending on how much cayenne you popped in there. So you, you get the heat and the spice of that chili, and then you take a bite of that cinnamon roll. You could see that 
frosting is starting to melt. And, uh, <laughs> those two flavors, that'll get you through a quarantine. Hold on. What do they do on the show? That doesn't... Uh... Okay, what are we, animals? Let's make this look nice. By the way, this is a bowl I never use. I just thought I'd bring that up for you. Looks like something I'd make in shop class, though. See how it's warped? I like this uh, smoked Gouda. So I would sprinkle a little of the smoked Gouda. Really sharp cheddar. I like real sharp cheddar. Since it's here, why not? A little dollop of sour cream. And I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't taste it, right? I gotta tell you folks, this cinnamon roll though, <laughs> you get a little of this cinnamon roll and that frosting. Oh. you're going to like this. I don't want to eat on camera in front of you. May I say, it's been a pleasure. This is the first time I've cooked alone in front of everybody. I'm going to toast to you. By the way, they say when you toast, it should always be from the left hand. You're supposed to look somebody in the eye, but you're supposed to put it in the left hand because your heart is on your left side. And whenever you toast, it should be from the heart. So from my heart to yours, Nice dining with you. Nice cooking with you. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Yeah, that works too. All right, I'm just going to eat in front of you now, Sue. So we should probably go.